two big games, seniors and gay. I mean, there was highly competitive. Yeah. What what distinguished Cleveland to get those two events? It's a great question. Dan asked both about the, the gay games and the senior games and what distinguished Cleveland. A little different in each. Um, the, the senior games I was closer to, we, we led the bid process. I'll, I'll, I have a, probably a little bit more knowledge to speak to that one first. Um, so there, there were about 20 cities involved in the, in the bid process, and, and um, um, ultimately it came down to three. It was Cleveland, Miami, and Birmingham were the three finalists for our year. What really distinguished it for us, we, we think, was two things. Um, one was in every city where that event has been held in the past, um, and this is more typical for these major events, what happens when they go to a community, a separate call local organizing committee is formed, a separate new nonprofit is formed, and a director is hired, and, and, and you build up a new organization to run and manage the event. In our case, we, we had, we, we, uh, believe it or not, a 14 staff bill, we're probably one of the, the three largest sports commissions in the country. Um, it, because it's business model of, of being able to run and manage events. So what we're able to say to them is, you're meeting the people who are going to run your event. And we have an infrastructure behind it. The board of the sports commission will, in essence, serve as the board of this event. And, and the staff you're meeting, who we ran the International Children's Games, we, we ran the NCAA Women's Final Four out of our office. So that helped a great deal. The other, I think, what, what really pushed it over the edge, and I'll tell you a comment that, that led to us uh, um, knowing that, we did something for two other events, the, the International Children's Games in 04 and the Women's Final Four in 07, that we did a huge amount of community programming around the event. So for the Women's Final Four, and this was part of our bid for that event, we really we realized that that was the largest, in most, most people's minds, the largest, most important women's sporting event in America. So we said, you know, it could mean a lot more to the community than just a big basketball tournament. And we ended up, uh, uh, very long story short, creating a whole year-long set of programs called Women Rock. There were 11 different programs that had over 10,000 individuals that were involved in the programs, most who didn't have a ticket to the Women's Final Four. Easy things like we had Billie Jean King come in and speak at the City Club. We had um, we, we held this 35th um, anniversary uh, conference on Title IX, uh, biggest conference on Title IX since its founding, and, and some really all kinds of partners around the community. And if, it was interesting was the NCAA, they, th four months after our event, they were bidding out the Women's Final Four for the following three years. They added an entire section to their, their bid book on community programming as a result of what Cleveland did for the event. So when we had the Senior Games folks in town, we spent, the other communities, we found this out later, spent, you know, they were there about two and a half days, two and a half days showing them facilities and, and making sure, convincing them that we, you know, we, have, we have the capacity to run the event. That, you know, that Miami or Birmingham, as we do with Cleveland, the infrastructure is there. We, 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 the very, when they, when they got off their plane, we had a camera, we had a, we had, we had a private room at John Q's, we gave them a presentation, and what we said was, we're going to show you today all about how we can run and manage the event, but the rest of the time, we're going to have you hear about what we plan to do with the event from a programmatic standpoint, and we had the clinic, and UH, and Metro, and Benjamin Rose Institute, and all these organizations involved in meeting with them, and hosting meetings about how we can make their event better. And that's what we start to do now. We, in fact, the very first full-time person we hired on the senior games was not about sports, was not about fundraising, it was about programs. And, we've are, and we have a huge committee, and it's, it's developing how do, we, how do we leverage having this event in town. And what we said to them is, it's not only better for Cleveland, but we'll make your event better. The next time you're going to bid out to a city, you can not only talk about how economically that event's great for Minneapolis or your next city, but you could talk about how if you do it like Cleveland did, it'll be that much more valuable. And when we had a press conference um, to announce the games coming here, their director came to us and said, he said, you know, so that, that Jerry Maguire line of, you have me at hello? He said, when you guys talked about that in that very first meeting you had, he said, our staff and board walked out saying we're coming to Cleveland, even before they had gone to Birmingham and Miami or they had seen our facilities. They said, nobody else has thought like that. And I think in the case of the gay games, in some ways I think it was similar. Um, we, we were only tangentially involved, but the group who, 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 um, who, who drove the bid process, they did a terrific job of, of driving the process and showing them that the community could handle it. But what we've heard from the Federation of Gay Games is one, the three finalists through a long process were Boston, Washington, and Cleveland. And I think what they looked at and what we sold them on quite a bit was we, the gay games can make a big difference here. If you go to Boston or Washington, which has a much more established LGBT community, it'll be a great event, but it's not going to be transformative. 
If you come here and, 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 and the gay games goes well, it could be transformative for the community. And they really like that idea that in addition to their event having a big economic impact on where it goes, it can really it can really transform a community. So um, I think in many ways that's become a hallmark of, of Cleveland's ability to run and manage these major events and do it in a way that, that adds a great deal of relevance above and beyond just the hotel rooms that it would fill. Next question. Just staying on those two sets of games, you know, we all want to see something really positive happen with them. Are there ways that the local community leaders can get involved, and what do we have to do to do that? I, I, thank you. I appreciate that question. Um, the question is for those who didn't hear, is there a way for people in the community to get involved in those kinds of initiatives? And the short answer is absolutely. Um, I can tell you that the way the, um, the, we, we've developed the, the structure of how the, the senior games is being managed and the gay games, the board is now being restructured and being done exactly the same way, is, is to um, allow for engagement of the community. Um, so there are there are so for instance with the senior games we're very fortunate we have three chairs of the event Toby Cosgrove from the clinic Beth Mooney from Key Bank and Jeff Friedman the CEO of Associated States Realty I mean, great great community leaders but beyond that there's about eight or ten different committees and and um, every one of them our program committee has probably 25 different organizations and people involved and as we move along with with marketing with events with every piece of it um, people who contact us. We find out what their interest is, and we slot them in so they have an opportunity to get involved and engaged. Um, all the way down to we're going to need three or 4,000 volunteers just during the times of both of those events. Um, and so I think at, at almost any level, people are really going to have the opportunity. And it takes so much to get this done. And, and I will tell you that, that um, whether it's ideas, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's across the board of, of of people bring their expertise to the table. And because we take such pride in what we talk about in our office is how do you wrap the community around an event? And we, we think that this, I really believe Cleveland does it better than any other place in the country. And so if we're just talking about how do you run the track meet, there's not a lot most people in this room can do. We've got somebody who knows how to run the track meet. But what, what, when we wanna make those 35,000 people feel special and do the little things right and the little things better than other communities do. So when they walk away, they saying they say Cleveland did it better than anybody else. It's what people bring to the table in their ideas and their expertise. And and um, you know while we have to raise money, there's so many little things, even from an in kind standpoint, that people. It, it, it is amazing what people will come up with to say, you know, I can do this for you. I can help with this. I know somebody here, or I'm just willing to put my time and my ideas. So um, I think if anybody ever contacts our office at the sports commission, um, there there is tremendous opportunity. So thank you for asking.